to see you here. Thank you for joining me in our Christmas winter wonderland again. Um, you know, it's it's still pretty cold outside, I gotta say, but we um, actually just decided it seemed like you guys enjoyed the Christmas decorations so much that we thought we would uh, keep it inside and let you enjoy a little more. As you can probably see, we've We've added some friends, a little llama and leg warmers. He's ready to work out. He's ready to go. Got a little narwhal over here and uh, some more accessories, some little hedgehogs, little penguins. So I thought you guys might enjoy seeing a little more of our Christmas stuff. And we actually plan to sort of rotate through. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm a bit of a Christmas tree addict. Um, so we plan to kind of rotate through some other sets and uh, show off some more of our Christmas decorations. But we thought we'd start here again for this week and uh, let you guys explore um, a little bit more as we work out and build up to the holiday season and to Christmas. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed just a little bit of fun in the background when we work out today. Um, so today we are doing an upper body boot camp. So we are really digging in and focusing on a lot of upper body work today. Um, what you're gonna need, I think I left off something in the Facebook post, so my apologies, but it's nothing too dramatic, something you probably have close by. So um, the one thing I did include was that you do want your full weight selection today. So I do have fives, tens, fifteens, and 120. Um, so you wanna bring kind of everything to the game, a light, medium, heavy, because as you know, when we work upper body, we're kind of all over the place with how heavy, how light we need to go. So full weight selection, and then your yoga mat, your floor support, whatever it is that keeps you comfy on the floor. We're gonna do a little bit of floor work. And the piece I left out is that you want to have yourself a sturdy chair. And we actually are gonna use it quite a bit. So I don't know how I managed to leave that out of the Facebook post, um, but we do need the sturdy chair. So as I'm talking, just keep listening and you can run off and grab yourself your chair. Just make sure again, as I say, I always emphasize sturdy because it does need to be able to hold your weight, um, balancing on it, leaning into it. So something like a camping chair is definitely not gonna work in this scenario. Um, you might even be able to use a couch um, for most of it. Um, so that is an option too, not the best option, but it can work also. So we are doing again, upper body boot camp. We are going to do just sets of two exercises, really digging in. We're gonna do supersets into one part of the upper body. So um, we're gonna start with some opposing, just because biceps, you can really only work one way. It's kinda hard, kinda boring to do um, a bicep superset. Um, and we have limited time, so I didn't wanna do a bicep superset, then a tricep superset. So we're gonna do a bicep tricep, and then after that, everything's gonna be digging into one specific area. So into the chest into the rear delts, into the back of your shoulders, into your back. So that's how we're gonna be working today. So we've got five sets of two exercises. So still 10 total exercises, which is about normal for us. Um, and we're gonna be working for reps, not time. So we're gonna be in that sort of 10 to 12 range, unless you are really pushing, trying to work on that really intense kind of muscle building, then you can go as heavy as eight reps. So weight's heavy enough that at the end of eight reps, you're getting kind of um, petite. That's the word I'm looking for. So eight, if you're really looking to go for that kind of strong muscle building, 10 to 12, we're still muscle building, we're still strength building, um, but just not going quite as heavy as an eight rep max would be. So 10 to 12 is the range we're working in. Of course, add music if you need it, maybe some holiday music. Um, for some of you, it might make you happy enough to work out. For some of you, it might make you angry enough to be fueled to work out really hard. As a former retail person, I tend to lean towards the other, but I have found the further I've got away from retail, the, the less Christmas music makes me so angry. <laughs> and uh, lastly, of course, always, I will be checking Facebook for questions once before we get started and then in between sets after that. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, and just, of course, modify always as needed, especially when we're working in upper body. It's important all the time, but when we work upper body, we've got these little small muscles that we're trying to ask to do a whole lot of work. And if you have problems, listen. I talk about my little shoulder thing all the time. 
Um, and I just listen. I learn to just honor it. And um, until I figure out what it is, which has been years, um, you know, why do a full push up when I can do a modified get great work and not make my shoulder angry? So that's the kind of mentality I like to encourage. And then just the last couple things I always say, I just always ask that you share these workouts, share my page, like, subscribe, comment, review, anything you could do to help promote what we are doing here at Strong Style Fitness. And lastly, um, as speaking of support, um, if you do wish to send any donations for these classes, these are donation based. What you can pay is what I will happily accept. Venmo at Strong Style Fit is where you will find me. All right, guys. So grab all your weights. Go grab your chair. If you haven't grabbed your chair just yet, I'm going to grab my drink of water, check and make sure the video is running, and then we will get started. All right, guys. So let's rock and roll. So we are going to start with the chair and we're gonna use the chair for both exercises. So I'm gonna scoot the chair up here more into the frame. And there we go. So we're going to do a seated bicep curl and tricep dips. So we will be using the chair for both of our exercises. So seated bicep curl, what makes um, seated special is that it really isolates the bicep um, or really whatever muscle group you're working when you're doing upper body. So we always tend to in a bicep curl, overhead press, anything like that, we get a little momentum out of our body. Even if we're trying really hard not to, it just happens. So one way to kind of eliminate that completely is to sit. Once you sit, there's no momentum. Nothing's happening here to build momentum at all. So I don't use these a lot in our class just because we don't sit a lot in class. But since we're really digging into upper body today, I wanted to really isolate and use some seated techniques. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So for your bicep curl, you will wanna scoot off the edge a little bit because chances are if you're sitting fully back on the seat, you're not gonna be able to extend your arms down. So we're gonna sit, roll those shoulders back, and we're gonna go for 12 seated bicep curl standard grip. All right, guys, roll those shoulders, tuck those elbows. Let's do it. 12, 11, really match my pace here. One, two, three, four, that's 10. One, two, three, four, that's nine. Eight, seven, you might notice six, that weights that normally don't feel that heavy feel a little heavier when you're seated. Five, again, it's taking that momentum out. Four, three, two, last one, boom. Yeah, big difference, big difference. I have definitely been borderline feeling like I need to move up from 15. But for that one, plenty. All right, so we're gonna do our tricep dips. So tricep dip, I'm gonna turn the chair. Yeah, I was like, wait, why did I turn the chair? Turn the chair. <laughs> and then we are going to sit to the side. And we've got our hands on the edge of the seat. Move these weights out just a little bit. All right, so we've got hands on the edge of our seat. Hi, Rizzo. We roll our shoulders back and down. Scoot off the edge, but we are staying right up against this edge. Big, proud chest, open, open, open. We drop straight back and lift. Straight back, lift. 10, nine, eight. And I say keep that back close, seven. Because if we get out here, which we tend to, look at where my shoulders are. Funky, weird, no good for them. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Bring it on up. 
and we've got our bicep curl. Let's see if I can just leave the chair sideways like this so I don't have to keep moving the chair back and forth. All right. So we're here. Tall again. We're going right back to it. Bicep curl. Engage that belly. We don't sit slumped. Nice tall posture. Lift it up. Let's go. 12. 11. 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one, one. Awesome. Set those weights down. We come right back to our tricep dips. So, just remember, you want to keep that back coming right up and down the seat. When you get far away, your shoulders get extended, they roll forward, you are no longer working your triceps. You are doing some unpleasant things to your shoulder at that point. So, just keep your back close and you'll be all set. All right. Hands on the edge of the seat. Crab chest. Roll those shoulders back. Open it up. Stick the girls out. Slide it off. Let's go. 12, 11, 10, 9. Really get a full extension at the top. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. Beautiful. One more set. Spin it around. We've got bicep curls again. Let's grab those weights. Whew. Sit tall. Got bicep curls coming. You should feel those arms now. They should be awake. All right, sit tall again. No slumps, tall. Sit on those sit bones, shoulders back and down, elbows tuck. Let's go. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Feels so different. Five, four, three, we can do it, two, last one, hmm, whew, so different, it's so crazy, so crazy, you won't believe it till you try it, all right, tricep dips, one more time, shoulders come back, proud chest, Really push it out there. Really open it up. Get those shoulders back. Now you can also take this further with your legs. I don't have the room here, but once you slide off, you can extend your legs out instead of having them bend to make it more challenging if you need to. So that's your option. So set it up, roll it back, slide it off. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Woo! All right. That's one set down. Bicep triceps. Done. Done, done, done. So I'm going to reset my chair here because we are going to keep using the chair. We are not done here. So leave the chair. Let's see here. Perfect. So we'll take a short little break. I'm gonna piece all my stuff back together here. All right, so we're gonna take a short little break and then we are going into a seated overhead press. 
we're gonna go into a seated overhead press and a front and lateral raise. So now we're gonna be working shoulders. Think front and the tops of your shoulders and not the back. We are gonna to get to the back of those shoulders, but our next set's gonna be focused here on our shoulders, all right? All right, so for that, you're probably gonna need a heavier set of weights for your overhead press. And again, I just mean heavier for you. That doesn't mean go grab your 25s, <laughs> unless that's heavy for you. So seated overhead press is a little heavier, and then we're going front lateral raise. So that's gonna be lighter. So you're probably gonna need two sets of weights for this next set. So grab those, get yourself set. I'll be back in just a sec. All right, so seated overhead press. I've got my weight here, front lateral raise. Eh, I'm gonna give this a shot. I'm definitely in that in-between. You might be too. The front for some of our weights, especially if you have a five, a 10, 15, 20, those sort of middle sets are super important, like a seven and a half, a 12. Super important to have in your weight set if you can get your hands on them um, or if that's financially available to you. I know I made a big investment to get all of these. So at the time I was like, oh, we'll wait and get those seven and a half later. <laughs> so I'm gonna um, seated overhead press is where we're gonna start. So it's that same kind of concept as what we talked about with the bicep curl. So seated overhead press, we can start to, as we're standing, get a little, a little momentum out of our legs to get those weights up. So again, if we sit, Goodbye momentum. Also, we start to get some core challenge because we're here and we've got a little bit of wobble here if you don't have a strong core. So it's a core challenge too. Extra icing on the cake, right? So seated overhead press, we're gonna have our weights here, goal post arms. They're gonna be slightly forward out of your shoulders. Now I don't mean here, but I don't want you to be here, hyper extended behind your shoulders, even in line, eh a little bit forward is gonna be the money spot for that, okay? Just putting our shoulders in a safer position. So, let's get those weights. Get set. Again, sit tall. So, the one thing about seated, I'll say real quick, is that don't bring your desk bad habits to your seat when you work out. So, when you're sitting here, sit on your sit bones. Don't roll forward into your back start leaning forward, don't slouch back, find your sit bones, wiggle around, you'll feel those sit bones. Even if you got a lot of cushion in your, in your tushin, <laughs> you can find them if you wiggle around and then sit on them, that's what they're there for. That's gonna get you nice and in the line, okay? All right, so let's bring these bad boys up, overhead, we've got gold post arms, that's where we stop and we push up 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. And set those down. And we're going to our front lateral raise. So front lateral raise, I'll show you with no weight so I can take it nice and slow. We've got our shoulders back and down as always. When we raise our arms, what do we tend to do? Bring our shoulders with them so our shoulders stay down. I actually think of like energy pushing down on my shoulder as my arm lifts up. Obviously you don't want to over exaggerate that, but that's kind of what I think is a force pushing down on my shoulder while my arm's lifting. So front lateral raise, we're here, and we're gonna alternate between the two for a total of 12. That is one, okay? All right. So I'm gonna start with this heavier weight, probably gonna go down, but thought I'd start there and see how we feel. All right, guys, roll it back, get it set, and we lift. One. Two. 
Now also be mindful and make sure that you're keeping your chest forward so you're not rotating like this to lift. Keep that chest forward. Three. Four. You start feeling a lot of pull in your neck. Seven. Means your weights are too heavy. And you're using all sorts of other muscles outside of your shoulder to get those weights up. Eight. Nine. Ten. Also, if you've got to 10 and you're too fatigued to get to 12, that's perfect. You're in the money spot. Stay right there. 11. Last one. 12. Make sure you get the other side. Perfect. Good job. Set those weights down. We've got our seated overhead press. So if you are using heavier weights, like I'm trying heavier weights, um, if you get to eight, that's good. If you get to nine, 10, that's good. So I'm saying you don't have to get to 12. If you get to eight, stay there, stay with your weight. But if you can't get to eight comfortably, then you need to drop down and then take your reps up to 12. All right, seated overhead press. Let's bring it back. <sighs> so I'm sure you can tell just from those two exercises where we are working in our shoulders. All right, so grab your seat. Find those sit bones again. Wiggle around, rock back and forth till you find them. You ready? All right, let's do it. Bring those weights up. Let's go. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, last one, one. Mm. Also, you'll feel uh, probably feeling maybe a little more in your triceps when you're doing these bench or these overhead presses because your triceps are a secondary mover in that exercise. So your triceps are working too and we just bombed them out with those tricep dips. So, extra, little, little bonus, a little more icing on the cake, right? <laughs> All right, guys, so we've got our front lateral raise again. So, shoulders back and down. Remember, send a little energy down in that shoulder as you lift up. Try to discourage that shrug. If you are shrugging, that's another sign your weight might be a little too heavy. On the flip side, if you're getting to 12 and you're like, Psh, this class is so easy, and then you need to pick those weights up, get them a little heavier. All right, let's get set. Stand nice and tall, shoulders down. Let's do it. 12. 11. Again, we're not rotating our chest. Nine. That's not nine, 10. 10. <laughs> nine. Eight. Seven. We're stopping about shoulder height. Six. drop my weight down. Four. I'm going to go a little lighter for the last couple. Three. Two. Last one. One. Man. So you'll see if you experiment with that yourself. 
If you are sort of in the middle, like ideally I think I would do seven and a half or eight with those, uh, with that particular exercise, but all I have is 10 and five. So five I know is too light. If I did all 12 reps with a five, I wouldn't get much out of it. So an alternative you can do is do your heavier weight for as long as you can. Again, if you can do a few, if you can only do one with a heavier weight, just stay with your lighter. But for me, you know, I got about six reps in with the heavier weight, probably a little more than that, and then went down to the lower weight. And if you do it that way, that lower weight for those last couple reps will feel plenty heavy. So that's another alternative. If you're in the middle, um, do the heaviest that you can for as many as reps as you can, and then drop to lighter. But again, only if that heavy is safe. I wasn't hurting myself with those tens, but I got to the point that I was like, if I try to lift this again, I am gonna hurt myself. So just a, a great way to meet yourself in the middle if you don't have weights that will meet you in the middle. All right, we've got our last set, overhead press. Set it up. And now I'm chatting a lot about this, but I just like to make sure because we are digging in to very specific body parts and we're using heavy weights that we're really doing it right. It's very important. All right, so find those sit bones, sit tall, gauge that core. Let's go. Whew. 12, 11, Whew. somebody turn the gravity up in this room, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, four, three, two, one. Perfect. Set it down. Awesome. Awesome. All right. We're going to those front laterals. I'm going to try with the heavier weight again. I may not get as far as I did the second time, but again, just the way to modify to get the best work out of what we got. All right. So, Man, front lateral raises, coming up. Scoop those weights up. <sighs> nice and tall, shoulders back and down. <sighs> Let's go. 12. <sighs> 11. <sighs> 10. Eight, seven, this is going to be my last one at this weight, down, six, and that's the beauty. These weights wouldn't feel like much at all to me normally, five, because I went as far as I could with those heavier ones. These feel plenty heavy now, four. Three, two, almost there guys, hang tough. Now these fives feel like I want to put them down. One, last one, boom. Beautiful work guys, good, good, good. I hope you reached that same level of fatigue. Whew. All right guys, so we are going to be working in the floor next. So you can get your chair out of the way. Don't get rid of it completely because we are gonna use it for one more exercise, um, but just for support, not sitting like we have been. So don't get rid of your chair, but you can take it out of your immediate space for the time being. Hi, Rizzo. Hi. What are you doing? What are you doing besides wigglings? Good girl. All right. So I am gonna scooch my chair out of the way completely here. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm going to stick a heavy weight on it so it doesn't slide around too much. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, you're so excited. <laughs> All right, guys. So before I take my quick break, I'm just going to tell you sort of where we're going so you can grab your weights while we break. We are going to work chest. 
So we haven't gotten too much into chest. So it's a little bit here, your chest moves some in that. Um, so you won't get quite that double fatigue, but we are doing two chest exercises, both on the floor. We're gonna do a chest fly. So we're on our back, opening here. That's usually a lighter weight. Even if you can bench press a ton, usually your chest flies lower because you are putting your shoulder in a pretty compromised position. So a lighter weight, I'm not saying a two pound weight, but just lighter usually for your chest fly. And then we're gonna bench press. So usually bench press is a little heavier, chest fly a little lighter. All right, I'm gonna take my quick break, meet you back here for some chest work. Yes, Geralda, exactly. I've got my, my little Rizzo helper. Oh, I think she's about to bring us a toy to show off. A Christmas toy, of course. Hi, Rizzo, what do you got? Oh, do you got your Christmas reindeer? Come here, Rue, come here, come here. Say hi to everybody real quick. Come here. Whoa, there she is with her little Christmas reindeer. Say hello, everybody. Yes, mwah. Oh, all right. All right, guys, so we're gonna go down to the floor. We're gonna stay in the floor, so just make sure that you have your weights close by for the entire set, okay? Oh, and Rizzo's gonna love it, because I'm gonna be in the floor. Hi. Your feet make funny noises on this mat, too. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have our weights. If you have two different sets of weights, just make sure you've got them both close by. So I'm gonna set these. These are gonna be my lighter ones over here because I feel safe enough to pick these up without assistance. So, we're gonna lay on our backs. Make sure we get nice and comfy. We are gonna start with the chest fly. So, your lighter weight, most likely. Lay on back, get yourself settled in. So, just some quick checks for laying on your back. Um, if you have a lot of curvature to your spine, or if you are blessed with a lot of junk in the trunk, which I am, really not. I worked for the little bit of junk I had in my trunk. I like to lift my hips up, kind of engage my core to straighten out that spine and then roll it down. So now my whole spine has contact on the floor instead of my booty with my back arched like this. So I lift, I tuck, I roll it down. So now my whole spine is nice and flat. Shoulders kind of tuck them under, chest open, neck long. So that's your good starting position. I'm going to reach over and grab these weights because they're not that heavy for me so I can safely reach over and grab them. But if that is not a safe position for you, please sit up, hold them to your chest and lay back. All right, so chest fly. Again, we're going to tuck those shoulders in, neck nice and long. We've got weights over our chest. We're going to bend our elbows and then we're going to open up like we're giving somebody a big hug, if we remember what that feels like <laughs> anymore. So we bend, we open up. You can lightly tap the floor, but that's as far as you wanna go, so you don't wanna rest your arms down. Um, you just wanna open up, boom, little tap, bring it back up. So what this feels like, just so you know, is that when you open up, you should feel your chest really expand under across. So you should really feel your chest expand and then where you feel that expansion is where you squeeze to bring those muscles together, bring those weights together. All right, set it up. Let's do it. 12, 11. Make sure you're keeping that bend in your elbow. 10, Nine, a lot of people when they open their arms, they tend to extend their arms open to eight. Seven, I'm not even gonna demonstrate it because it's so not good for you. Six. Five, it's like you have your arms around a big beach ball and then you're just letting it go. Four, and then wrapping back around it. Three, bandits here. Two, and one, beautiful. Hi, Bandit. 
Oh, you guys don't get to see this guy much. He is a 17 and a half. He is blind and he is deaf. Hi, and he found me. Hello. Hi, buddy. Hi, sweet boy. Sorry to disrupt our video, but he's being snuggly and I'm gonna take advantage of it. Hi, Bubba. Mwah. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to our bench press. This is gonna be your slightly heavier weight. So we're gonna pick those weights up, set them on our knees, kick them up. Now we are set. Again, shoulders plug back, weights over our chest. We drop them down. We squeeze. So the same thing as that chest fly. You feel your chest expand and then squeeze it closed. Three. Hi, Bubba. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10, last two, 11, and 12. Beautiful, you can bring those weights down to your side, set them down. Again, unless they're super heavy, then you can roll them off, you got a lot of options. All right, give myself a quick stretch. Again, because I have this weird shoulder thing, I just have to be careful of my shoulder and what's going on. All right. I'm gonna bring this back. All right. He's also not the best about holding his bladder, so I'm just checking to make sure we don't have any incidents here. All right, so we've got a little bend in our elbows, weights over our chest. We go back to those flies. Let's open it up. 12. <laughs> 11. Ruth kissing me in my eyeball. 10. This is hilarious. 9. Both of you guys. Thank you, Rizzo. 8. Stop, stop. that's enough. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. Two and one. Beautiful. Set those weights down. Thank you, Rizzo. Thank you very much. You're being very helpful. As long as nobody wants to see my face. Oh, what are we what are we doing here? Are you gonna come up here while I bench? Alright, come on. Come on. All the way. Ruth. Up. Good girl. You gonna stay there with your butt in my face? Okay, that's one way to do it. All right, so we've got our weights over our chest. Yes, stay there. Good girl. All right, let's bench. 12, good girl. 11, 10, nine, puppy is optional. Eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Boom. Perfect. And set those weights down. So we've got one more set through. You gonna stay for the set? Okay. You stay right there. Good girl. All right, guys, so those are probably feeling pretty intense. We are hitting the exact same muscles with both of these exercises. So it is getting intense for me. I know it is probably for you too. So definitely also keep in mind that based on that, if you need to drop your weights a little bit or if you need to shorten your set a little bit. And again, I'm never telling you this stuff to say, take it easy, make it easier on you. I'm just saying, listen to your body. Don't hurt yourself. Okay, somebody has to tell you that because we don't tell ourselves that usually. We just dig in, grind it out, beat ourselves up and move on, right? So it's good to have somebody telling you to play it cool every now and then. All right, so we've got our chest fly. 
Gonna bring those shoulders down, chest over our weights, or chest over our Shih Tzu, whichever one that's uh, happening here. All right, open up, squeeze it together. Good, 11, 10, Geralda, I hope you're still watching because you will love this. <laughs> Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Beautiful job, guys. All right, we've got our bench press, and then we will be done with chest. <sighs> All right, so I'm gonna keep my lighter weights close by because I am starting to feel my angry shoulder just a little bit. So I'm gonna keep my weights close by just in case I need to drop down. Weights come up over our chest. Oh, you're done with chest? Okay. <laughs> All right, so we've got our bench press. One last time, weights over our chest. Plug those shoulders back. Let's do it. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, pop us back. One, I've got such an attentive audience today. All right, guys, chest is done. Ah, so you can stretch it back. Give yourself a nice little stretch. You can stretch open. Ooh, a little side to side roll, pull through that front shoulder. Ah, awesome work. So we can come on out of the floor now. Hello, everybody. What a doggy audience I have. All right, guys. So we are going to need our chair one more time, but it's just going to be for support. So if that matters to you where you place your chair, I'm not going to be bringing mine totally back into frame. So we need your chair for support. You need your light weights for sure, probably the lightest that you have. And let's see, what else do we need as I'm tidying up here? All right, so we're going to need probably your medium weight and your light weight, or potentially just your light weight. Or if you have a couple sets of weights, let's say your lightest and your next lightest, because um, the two exercises we're gonna do one, you can go a little heavier, but again, you have to be mindful of here. And then the other one, you're going light. Listen to me, you're going light. Hear me, hear me, <laughs> all right? Okay, so guys, I'm gonna take a quick break, make sure the dogs are all situated here, and uh, get my chair set up, water, all that fun stuff, and then we will get back to it. Hmm. All right, guys. So let's get ourselves set up here. So we're going to have our light weights for sure. We've got our light weights and then medium to light for our other exercise. Let's get that chair up just a little bit. Perfect. So we are going to do a high pull. So here we're going to be working the backs of our shoulders. So high pull, we are going to roll shoulders back and down. We've got our weights to the front. We lead with our elbows and pull up. Now, 
High pull. I'm going to show you from the back. High pull. So, here's my caveats. When we're high pulling, we're not bringing our elbows way up here. I know that you see that sometimes in exercise videos or in exercise posters. No, please don't. Please don't. There's so many things that are going wrong when these elbows come up here. So our elbows, while we do lead with them, they are staying down and our shoulders are pulling down and in. So we're not up here, we're down. That should keep it out of here. If you are high pulling like this and you're still feeling through here, that just means that your weights are too heavy. You need to drop them down, okay? So that's where we're gonna be at with that. So we're gonna start with high pull and then we're gonna do a rear delt row, okay? All right, so high pull. All right, so high pull, shoulders down, weights in front, we pull up, 12, 11, 10, again, you're getting a lot of shoulder activation, 9, show you from the back again, 8, 7, not that I have these crazy ripped shoulders, but hopefully you can see the muscles moving back there, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. All right, so we're gonna do a rear delt row. So rear delt row, we usually do single-sided, so this one's gonna take a little bit longer, um, but well worth it. So rear delt row, we're gonna come, we're gonna use our chair, for our support and we're gonna lean into it. And I really want us to lean into it, but not like this. Support, steady, nice lean in. Roll that shoulder back, don't let it dangle forward. Roll that shoulder back, our weight flips to an underhand grip. We pull high up. So you should feel the back of your shoulder, but way higher than when we were doing those high pulls. So back of your shoulder, you're feeling down in here from those high pulls. With these, you should be feeling more up in here. Again, not in your neck, but more up in here, okay? All right, so we're gonna do just 10 of these on each side, just to speed it up a little bit, okay? So neck long, support with that chair, shoulder back, not here, shoulder back. We pull 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Other side. So you should see why I want you to go light here. If you're too heavy, you're gonna be feeling your neck, your traps. You need to go nice and light so you can really engage that proper muscle. All right, shoulder back, neck long, pull high. 10, nine, eight. You're working your rear delt here. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. All right, we've got those high pulls. Let's go right back to it. Okie dokie, high pulls. I'll do these from the front this time. But again, remember, engagement through the back of that shoulder. We're not pulling elbows way high, okay? All right, stand tall. Weights come to the front, shoulders back and down. We pull up, 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, 
four, three, two, last one, one. Beautiful. All right, so those weights down, we're going right back to this row. Set yourself up. Again, you want to be supported. You want to be extended. You don't want to be flopped through. Plug that shoulder back. Long neck. Flip that grip. We pull high. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Other side. Going for ten. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three, two, last one, one. Awesome, all right. So you should be able to feel a really distinct difference between the muscles here and the muscles here. Should feel very different, two distinct parts of that shoulder is where you're hitting. All right, we've got the high pull one last time. I'll do a few from the front, a few from the back. All right. Let's do it. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two, one. Yes. <laughs> All right. We've got those rear delt rows and then we will be done with the set. We have one last set. Think we can squeeze it in. We'll just move quickly. All right. Lightweight. Set it up. Roll that shoulder back. Extend. Keep that shoulder plugged back. We pull high. Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Other side. Again, plug that shoulder back. Keep it back. Ten, nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one. One. Awesome, guys. All right, set those weights down. Chair can get out of your space, out of your base. <laughs> so get those all situated. I'm going to kick. My mat keeps coming apart on me. There we go. Only worried about it because I really need it for our next couple exercises. All right, so we can move our chair out of our way here. We've got our mat. So what we're gonna need for this exercise is one heavy weight for these next two exercises. If you have a pair of heavy weights, you might wanna use two, but one will get you through just fine. So we're gonna be working in the floor. We're gonna do an alternating renegade row, which is definitely very challenging. I'll show you some variations. I would say it's definitely in the upper echelon of challenging exercises. So I'll show you a couple modifications and then we're gonna do a dumbbell pullover. That is definitely one weight. The renegade row, it can be one weight or two, just depending on what's comfortable for you. So I'm gonna take a super quick break and then we will get started with our last set.
All right, guys. So Renegade Row, and then we'll get moving super fast. I don't want to take up too much of it. any more time and go over too far. So the alternated Renegade Rows, we're also going to keep to a short set because, again, it is definitely in the upper echelon of challenging exercises, and I don't want to push anybody too far beyond their means. So two versions of your Renegade Row. There's actually three. So, um, and one is not a modification I normally get, it's one I normally warn against, but this is a challenging enough exercise that it's acceptable. So your fullest version of Renegade Row, you can use two weights or one. Fullest version is you go out into full plank with your weights underneath your hands. And you want a nice wide base, unlike a regular plank where you're about hip width. You want a nice wide base, you really engage that core, and you're going to row here. Very challenging. Or if it hurts to be up on that weight, you can do a hand, row, put it to the other hand, row. So both equally challenging. It's just which one feels more comfortable under your hands. Or you can Again, same thing, one weight or two, you can go to modified plank. So lift up into plank, drop your knees, row, row. Very challenging. Or the modification I never give is you can work in tabletop. So normally I say, don't modify plank to tabletop. You were not modifying plank. In this one instance, you can come to tabletop, row, row. Still, great exercise, hard work. So, that's your three levels. You work with whatever works for you. We are going to do 12 total. So that'll be six each arm. Again, one last time I'll say it, upper echelon of challenging is too much. Even in your, mod take it down to your modification, or if you need to do fewer reps, do it. I challenge yourself though, to work through the modifications. So if you get too tired in the full version, go to the modification. If you get too tired then, go down to the next, okay? Don't give up on you. You can totally do it. Just find the right level for you to work at today. All right, so we're gonna go for 12 total. If you're meeting me in the full version, have a nice wide base, get yourself really set up nice and strong. Let's go. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Set it down. For me, the most challenging part is staying up on those weights. So I will probably try <laughs> just using the one weight next time. It's always a challenge. I always try it and I'm always like, oh, it's not getting easier. The exercise itself gets easier, but holding your weight up on those handles doesn't make it much easier. <laughs> All right, so dumbbell pullover. We're gonna lay on our back. Again, get yourself set up. Roll that spine down so you're nice and long. We're gonna take the heavy weight. This is a heavy weight exercise. We're gonna hold and goblet over our chest, plug those shoulders back. We drop the weight back overhead and then pull over. So think about using those big muscles down along your back, not so much your shoulders when you do this exercise. Envision those long muscles running down your spine. And that's what I want you to think about. All right, 12. 11, 10, keep that core engaged, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 
one. Perfect. All right. Roll that heavy weight off. Back to those renegade rows. So I'm going to experiment with rotating the one weight. It's a little less efficient for sure, but if that just can be for some, myself included, just excruciating to be up on those hands for too long. So we come on up. You can also just stay on one side. If the alternating is too much, to try to change the weight back and forth. Do six on one side, six on the other. All right, guys, lift it up. Let's go. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, sit it down with control, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, upper echelon challenging exercises. All right, dumbbell pullovers. Hi, BZ. We're back to visit again. Hi, Boba. Hi. Hi, everybody. Dog party. Hello. Hi. All right. Let's set it back. Nice long spine, weight over our chest. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, engage that core. Three, you're probably feeling a nice pull through the front of those abs. Two, one, nice. Lower that weight down. If you can, you can safely roll it off to one side. We've got one more set, guys, and we will be done. So yeah, when you're passing that weight back and forth, it's helpful to kind of set it down near your other hand so you don't have to reach so far. And try to do it with control. Try not to just drop it or slam it down, okay? If you can't, then just stay on one side and we're rowing, that elbow comes right back past those ribs. All right, set it up. Wide base if you're not modifying. Let's do it. 12, 11, 10. I gotta scoot from a little close to my entertainment center here. Let's see. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four. You got it, guys. You got it. I'm talking to myself, too. Three. Two. One. Man, always oh, that's an exercise. There's a few exercises out there I call humblers. <laughs> that if you're ever feeling really cocky about your fitness level, if you ever want to be humbled, brought down a peg, there's a few exercises that will definitely do it. <laughs> that is one. All right. All right, guys. Dumbbell pullovers. Last time. Bring that weight up overhead. Get your shoulders set. Then we go over chest. Engage that core. <sighs> Drop it back. Twelve. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 
six, five, four, three, last two guys, two, and one. Awesome work. Offload that weight. Give yourself a big overhead stretch. Oh, it feels so good. Stretch those feet out long. Mmm, nice good morning stretch at 7 p.m. <laughs> oh, good, good job, guys. Come on up if you're ready. Whew. Great work today. I know that was a lot of, I mean, that was an hour straight. I noticed what time we started. It's an hour straight of upper body work. So we have dug in. We have explored just about every muscle we have from the waist up, aside from our core, but we still got a little bit of core too. So we've really dug in, really explored the upper body, what we can do with it. Probably feeling a lot of fatigue. If you go to wash your hair later, you might be like, <laughs> so totally expected, nothing's wrong. So guys, I thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed um, the dog entertainment that we had. We had plenty today. So between that and all the Christmas decorations, we were just knocking it out with entertainment, right? So I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for being here. As always, share, subscribe, like, review, post, anything you can do to help get the word out about what we're doing here. And if you do wish to donate any funds for these classes, Venmo at Strong Style Fit is where you'll find me. It is fantastic of those of you that do give. I thank you so much. Um, this is a one, well, one woman and a producer show, and uh, we put a lot of work into this, and I hope that you guys are seeing the benefits, seeing the changes, and are loving these workouts as much as we enjoy putting them on. So thanks, guys. I'll see you in a few days for our next workout. Until then, stay safe. Love on somebody. Mwah.